In my last video, I talked about the benefits of running Serverless Puppet with Bolt. And today I'm gonna to take you through step-by-step -step creating a Bolt project from the ground up to do that. So like last time, what I've got here is a AWS instance that I've just spun up from Terraform. So this is a vanilla Ubuntu instance on AWS. All I've done is allow SSH access and dropped on my SSH private key. So now we're going to use Puppet to configure this instance and we're gonna do this using a Bolt plan. So I've got an empty directory here that I'm gonna start with. So the first thing we need to do is initialize the Bolt project and we do that with the Bolt project init command followed by the name of the project that we want to create. In this case, I'm gonna use the name Bolt demo. And what this command has done is seeded our directory here with a couple of files to get us started. So let's look first at Bolt project.yaml. So in Bolt project.yaml, we see two things here. We've got the name of the project that we created and we've got an empty array called modules. So in this modules array, we're gonna specify some Puppet modules that we want to pull in from outside sources like the Puppet Forge. And you can think of this in regular Puppet a bit like a, a Puppet file. So let's first pull in the standard lib module, which we're gonna need. So this is a YAML array, so we're gonna start this with a dash. So starting with Puppet Lab standard lib, we give it first a name and Puppet Labs standard lib. We then tell Bolt where we want to source this from. In this case, it's going to be a Git repository. So Git colon, and then the URL to that Git repository, which is on github.com. We can then specify a Git reference or a Git tag to just pull in a specific version. So in this case, I want version V840. And by default, Bolt will try and pull in any dependencies listed in the metadata json.file within that module. In this case, I want to do this manually. So I'm going to tell it to resolve false. So it won't try and pull in any dependencies that it finds. So here we've got the Puppet Lab standard lib module that will get pulled in. I'm gonna add a few more as well. Let's just paste those in. So I'm also gonna bring in the NTP module from Puppet Labs, the accounts module to manage user accounts and the SAS sudo module to manage our sudo rules. So the data we put in here is pretty much the same as you'd put in a regular Puppet file. In fact, Bolt will create a Puppet file on the fly when we run it later. So the last thing I'm gonna put in my Bolt project.yaml is a module path. So this will tell Bolt to look in a different location for extra Puppet classes. And I'm gonna call this site, and we're gonna to come to that shortly. So that's it for Bolt project.yaml, let's save that. So now we're gonna create a fairly basic Puppet configuration, which is pretty standard if you're used to normal Puppet control repos. So first I'm gonna create this directory called site, and in there I'm gonna put my Puppet code that represents my profiles. So in site, we wanna create a folder called profile and in there manifests. And then in manifests, I'm gonna create a file called base.pp and this is gonna be my base profile. So it's a puppet class, class profile base. And in here, I'm just going to include my base classes. So I'm gonna include the NCP class, I'm gonna include the accounts class and the sudo class. And these will be made available because we're pulling these in in our bolt project.yaml. So let's save that. So the next thing we're going to create for our puppet configuration is a hira.yaml file so we can give some data to these classes. So let's create a new file in the root here called hira.yaml. So I'm going to keep this really simple. We're just going to have a common.yaml for all our data. So standard hira configuration. We're going to specify a data directory called data. This is where hira is going to look up the data keys. And it's just going to be standard YAML. And the hierarchy that we're going to use is going to have one name called common. And we'll give that common.yaml. So our data is going to come from the data directory and it's going to look in common.yaml. So let's save that. So now we're going to create this common.yaml and populate it with some data. So the first thing we want to do is create the data folder here. So new folder called data. And then under data, we're gonna have a file called common.yaml. So in here, I'm just gonna do some basic configuration. I want to first add some configuration for sudo. And these are parameters that you can get from looking at the modules documentation. I'm gonna add now a configuration to add sudo rights to a group called admins. Now I'm gonna configure some accounts. So the first thing I want to do is use the accounts module to configure a group called admins. And also using the accounts module, I'm gonna create myself a user, which is a member of the group admin. So I have sudo rights and give it my SSH key. 
So here we've got a fairly basic Puppet configuration. We've got a profile base that will pull in our sudo and accounts modules and NTP, and then we've got some data here in Hira that's used to configure those. So we're not running this on our Puppet server, we're doing all this serverless. So in order to apply this Puppet code to our destination AWS instance, we need to write a Bolt plan. So back in our root directory here, we're gonna create a new folder called plans. So under plans, we're gonna create a new file called puppet.pp and here we're going to create the bolt plan and it's in the puppet language in the puppet dsl and we're going to keep this fairly minimal so to start with we're going to open with plan so this is not a puppet class it's a puppet plan and then we give that a name so it's the net first the name of our project which is bolt demo colon colon and then the name of our plan which is puppet and the syntax here is pretty similar to a puppet class so we give it some arguments in brackets and when we're dealing with plans, we have a data type called target spec, which we're going to use, and a parameter of targets. Targets will be effectively the list of nodes that we want to run this plan against. Now down here in between the brackets here, we're going to introduce our bolt plan. We're going to do this in two stages. The first, we're going to make sure that Puppet is configured on the remote target and gather all the facts and do everything that we need to do in order to run our bolt plan. And we do that by using the apply prep command applied to the targets. So targets dot apply prep. So apply prep does two things. It will set up all the scaffolding that we need in order to run the bolt plan. So it'll make sure that puppets installed and all the other dependencies are in place. And it'll also gather up all the facts on that target node. The second stage of this plan is going to be to actually apply our puppet code. So here we're going to say results equals the apply function. And then the argument to apply would be the targets that we're running against. And this is a code block. And in between here, we can specify any puppet code that we want to run against the target nodes. So in this case, the only thing I want to run is include profile base. And Bolt's going to know where to find that because we specified that in our Bolt project.yaml when we said here module path site. And under site, we have the profile module with the base class in there. So it's going to find that from there. So that's our really simple Bolt plan that we're going to run. Save that. So the last file we're going to look at now is a file that was created when we initiated the project called inventory.yaml. And we can see here commented out, we've got various examples of how we can configure this. I'm just going to remove all that for now. And we're going to do this from scratch. So the first thing in inventory.yaml is we're going to tell Bolt how we want to communicate with the target nodes. Bolt supports a variety of different transport options and the one we're going to use is just standard SSH. So Bolt will use SSH to log into our target node and apply the configuration. So the first level here is configuration, config. We're going to tell it to use the transport SSH. And now we're going to give it some configuration for SSH. I'm going to specify host key check false. So we're not going to verify the host key for this demo. So I'm going to tell Bolt where to find the SSH private key that was deployed by AWS. So private key. In my case, it's in my home directory and it's called ID underscore Bolt. And the image I used for my AWS instance will configure a default user called Ubuntu. So that's the user that we're going to log in as. That's the one that has the SSH key. But I don't want to run my puppet code as Ubuntu because I need root privileges. So the Ubuntu user has sudo, so here I can just specify run as and then root. And under the hood, Bolt will use sudo to run my configuration as root. So now we've defined our transport configuration, we need to now tell Bolt about the target nodes that we're running against. So under here, we can create a new key called groups. Groups are pretty arbitrary. They can be very useful for splitting up your list of instances into uh, roles or environments or however you see fit. Here, we're just gonna create a group called demo and then for targets we're going to give it a list of servers that we're going to run against in this case we've only got one and the host name of the aws instance that i created so now we're almost ready to apply this plan to our target node before we do that we need to pull in all of these modules that we specified here in our bolt project.yaml our third party modules and we can do that using the bolt module command bolt module install we can see here that Bolt will actually create a Puppet file based on the information that we've specified in our Bolt project.yaml. We can see that here. And we can see that here it's specified a module directory of dot modules and that's where it's installed all of our third party forge modules, which we can see under here. So we've got our accounts module, NTP, standard lib and sudo. So the last step now is to actually run our Bolt plan. So if we have a look at our inventory.yaml here, this is the group that we want to run against. So in my terminal, I can just run Bolt plan run. I'm going to give it dash V to make it verbose. 
Now I'm going to give it the name of the plan. If we look under here, the name of the plan is bolt demo colon colon puppet. And now we need to specify which targets we want to run against. So if we look at my inventory.yaml again, we can see I want to run it against this group here. And we use the dash T or targets flag. And this flag will take a specific target or a group name. So in this case, I'm just going to give it demo and pick up on any targets that I have within that group. And then we run that. So we can see here that the first thing that Bolt is doing is installing Puppet on the target node. So this is, as I said, a vanilla AWS instance of Ubuntu, so it doesn't have Puppet installed. Bolt will take care of all that for me. Now we're applying the catalog. And there we go. I've done a Puppet run. I've got all my resources. I've got my sudo rules and my user account is all configured on the target node. So there you have it step by step on how to configure a basic bolt plan to run Puppet serverless on your infrastructure. Stay tuned for the next video where we're going to incorporate GitHub Actions in order to tie this all up into one CI pipeline. If you like this video, there's a button for that. I'm Craig Dunn. See you in the next one.